Welcome, and thank you for taking some time with me today to review the Enhanced Broker Credit Report. In this overview, I will introduce you to this new report that's being rolled out within the Broker Channel Network beginning this year in 2020. This webinar is designed to provide an overview of the new report, reasons why Equifax is implementing it, and most importantly, how to read the new report. So let's begin. In 2019, a compliance gap was identified with regards to how data flows throughout the mortgage lending ecosystem. Specifically, as it relates to consumer consent, transparency, and secure transmission of sensitive personal information. With regards to consent, the Ontario Privacy Commissioner has new consent requirements that enhances the requirements on businesses in obtaining informed consent. Regarding consumer transparency, a fundamental principle of credit reporting legislation is the inquiry posting process, meaning the process whereby each access to a credit file should be disclosed on a credit file to help enable and empower individuals to stay informed about who and why their credit information was accessed. It has been flagged that credit file access and use may be occurring outside of the approved systems that enable consumer transparency and recipient oversight. Lastly, regarding secure transmission of sensitive personal information, PIPEDA sets out clear requirements for how sensitive personal data must be protected when collected, used, disclosed, and stored. It has been flagged that evolved historical practices of data transmission in the mortgage lending ecosystem do not in all cases meet these safeguarding requirements, including that the data is being transmitted by insecure means such as email and that data is being transmitted contrary to or without a contract and therefore the recipient has not been vetted from a data safeguarding perspective and does not fall under the compliance and security oversight that data transmission through approved channels is subject to. Equifax is committed to advocating for consumers and our partners to ensure a level playing field. We will work together to close the gaps and ensure Equifax is committed to leading these efforts and enabling us all to ensure we are doing the right thing for our ultimate customer, the consumer. Our goal was to design a solution that focuses on closing compliance gaps, but also provides value added information. We are working with portal providers to ensure the use and security of consumer credit file information is managed in accordance with industry best practices and regulatory requirements. With lenders, an enhanced process will ensure the highest levels of integrity and transparency to meet industry compliance standards. The process will require lenders maintain an active Equifax member number. And for brokers, an enhanced broker credit report will improve the adjudication process as well as assist in prioritizing the best potential customers. In addition, we're ensuring that brokers are appropriately licensed to share files with credentialed parties. Now, let's take a look at some of these new services. As I mentioned earlier, this year in 2020, Equifax is releasing an enhanced broker report. The new value added solution is a designed bundle to provide deeper insights on mortgage applicants and help improve information accuracy. We've been on a continuous product journey in the mortgage credit lending space. Initially, brokers were provided access to the consumer credit file, SafeScan, and the FICO 4 score formerly known as Beacon 4. In April 2015, that information was supplemented with the addition of ERS2 and CRP3B scores, which are both delinquency scores, as well as BNI2, a bankruptcy predictor score, and mortgage and telco data. In June of 2016, the FICO score was upgraded to FICO 8, previously known as Beacon 9 
It's the same predictive score as always. It's just simply now rebranded as FICO-8. And finally, as of April 2020, we are adding in AML Assist Single Source, the Enhanced Consumer Credit Database, implementing prior trade sorting, as well as formalizing multiple usage and sharing licensing of score credit files. In the next few slides, I will take you through and will go into detail on the new AML Assist segment, some of the enhanced trade detail, and the prioritized trade sort. On the Equifax Hub portal, we have made a user guide available to you, which you can reference at any time. The user guide was intended to highlight the recent changes to the report. Let's walk through a sample file together in detail. But first, a bit of background information on AML compliance tools at Equifax that might be unfamiliar to some. In 2017, Equifax Canada launched AML Assist, which is designed to help lenders fulfill their obligations under the Proceeds of Crime, Money Laundering, and Terrorist Financing Act. In 2016, FinTrack updated the regulations to enable lenders to more easily comply in a non-face-to-face -face environment. It was at that time that the act was amended to permit the use of a credit file in identity verification. The regulations were updated to indicate that a credit file may be used as a source of identity verification if the following conditions are met. The credit file and application inquiry must match on name, address, date of birth, the credit file must be from Canada, and it must be in existence for three years or more. If these conditions are met, then the credit file itself is an acceptable document for identity verification. On this slide, you will see how the AML Assist segment will display. There's a lot of information that is returned, but I've highlighted the two main elements that brokers should be looking for. First, where it reads single source decision, you will see either a Y, which means it has passed the decision criteria, or N, which means it has failed. If it passes, then you can rest assured knowing that the credit file method will satisfy the lender's AML compliance requirements. If it fails, however, then supplemental proof of identity will be required by a lender so that they can complete their due diligence. Most often, a file will receive a fail decision if the file is less than three years old. The date of the file is found highlighted here. In the second section of the AML Assist segment, you will see the matching criteria results listed. This information will be helpful in understanding what elements might have led to a fail decision if the age of the file is greater than three years old. In this example, there is not a match on the postal code, which rendered the decision a fail. If your customer's AML Assist decision is a fail, simply prepare to have them provide sufficient proof of identity documents, such as government-issued photo ID. With the enhanced credit data elements, you will now have more granular information than was previously available. In addition to payment terms, you will now have visibility to actual payment amount, date of first delinquency, and any written off amounts. Account numbers have expanded from 15 to 40 bytes. Balance and high credit dollar amounts have expanded from a limitation of 4 bytes to 10 bytes, meaning if a balance on a mortgage is, let's say, for example, $1,256,000, previously you would have only seen 1.2M truncated instead of the full exact amount. That was due to the character limitation of being 4 bytes. 
This helps with more accurate total debt service ratio calculations. Date fields are also now more complete, showing the full year, month, and day. And lastly, there's more detail available describing the payment terms, such as monthly, biweekly, or weekly. Finally, the enhanced trade segment will also now provide you with a snapshot of the last 36 monthly payment ratings for each trade. This is referred to as the trade payment profile and is read from left to right. In this example, four is the most current rating. In the report sample, you will note that each new trade is indicated with an asterisk. The first trade displayed is a mortgage trade, and the second one here in our example is an installment loan. Looking at the installment loan, for example, you can now see that the credit limit amount is displayed in full at $12,000. The trade payment profile shows that this consumer is current on this particular account, but has had a fairly recent history of missed payments. Knowing this information in advance can better prepare you and your customer during the mortgage application stage. And finally, the trade segment has now been sorted by order of priority payments. Open accounts display first and the close accounts will appear at the end. And you will always now see the credit products your consumer has which require fixed payment obligations, such as mortgage and auto loans, followed by secure lending, then unsecured lending, such as credit cards and telco accounts. We hope you found this tutorial helpful in understanding the new data elements you will begin to see with the Enhanced Broker Credit Report. Several resources have been made available at the Equifax Hub. Please feel free to visit that site and download any materials you might need. Thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of your day.